Today, we're going to be diving into some of Matt Smith's iconic characters that have bent the knee. Of course, it's not surprising that Damon isn't the only dramatic royal he's played, but maybe the one with the best hair. Still, he's been paired with a lot of hardcore queens that have earned his head bowed. So, if you're ready to see who else has been worthy and what this means going forward, let's get into it. First up, the Time Traveler's royalty. Simply keeping with the traditions of my house, the same as my brother did for his heir. Honestly, saying Time Travelers still makes us insanely happy because, come on, that collab will always be a fever dream. But see, Doctor Who's doctors have met many queens over the course of their many years on TV. Still, it was mind-blowing that the 11th Doctor, Matt Smith, was able to meet one of each. If you didn't catch that, he and Amy Pond traveled to the future in his second appearance as the Doctor and his first proper run in the TARDIS. And if that wasn't enough, it ended with the Doctor meeting Queen Elizabeth X there. Though, instead of islands in the Atlantic, her Great Britain was built on the back of a space whale. You do sometimes have to question exactly what the writers of this show are on when coming up with these stories, and who do we gotta talk to to get some of it. Still, Liz X figured out that the Doctor was from stories in her family, recognizing some of his features, like the hair. And so, the seeds for the next Elizabeth appearance were planted. In the 50th special day of the Doctor, David Tennant's Doctor hints toward having made Queen Elizabeth I's moniker, the Virgin Queen, a nickname, as one does. So, the meeting of the three carries on throughout the episodes. The version of Queen Liz may come up again, with Tennant reprising the role. But, what's amazing is this isn't the only time Smith has met the British Queen. Up next, Prince Philip and Damon are insanely different. But many of the small folk like to believe that as a male... Egon should be the heir. And yet, played by the same actor who has a knack for being cast as royalty. Good for him. So it just makes sense that he'd dip into the history of the British royal family in the hit series The Crown. And we wouldn't blame you. Queen Elizabeth II and her husband's real-life history is well documented. Some might say a little too much. But The Crown, on the other hand, is the British monarchy's equal to the West Wing in the U.S. And it's a mostly fictional look at what people who work in these dull, mythic, and unchanging entities must go through. Honestly, isn't it interesting? interesting that more stories are now showing how fixed even the royals' rules are, and how maybe stopping a lot of needed change. Hey, just food for thought here. Still, Smith's performance is top-notch. Philip, in some ways, is sorta like Damon because of his closeness to the throne and the tension that comes with being the royal pretty face. But unlike the Targaryen prince, Smith's Philip is as friendly as Claire Foy's Elizabeth. Now we know, while cast changes were pretty much inevitable, the series was at its best with Foy and Smith in the lead roles. Of course, we ain't saying that to deny the insane talents of fellow Doctor Who alumni Olivia Coleman and Imelda Staunton. And while Damon in House of the Dragon is a big contrast to Philip, Smith's charm in playing them was definitely the same. Following that, what's the pressure in playing royalty? For the king's suffering, did the maesters also prescribe the removal of Targaryen heraldry and the installation in its stead of various statues and stars? With the resume Smith is racked up, we can easily tell you he's more or less a king, at least in Britain. And that's a lot to the credit of Doctor Who, which as incredible as it is, the pressure of playing a Targaryen is far less. If that doesn't put it into perspective for you guys, we don't know what will. Smith has recently compared his iconic roles in the shows, saying that because he was starring with other actors in House of the Dragon, the pressure was shared. You can see why then playing the Doctor would be such a huge role. According to him, since House of the Dragon is more of a global hit, the expectations aren't so focused. He could go to a studio in Watford and still be able to get his lines together. But with Doctor Who, the lore of that show is almost part of British pop history. Honestly, he admitted that anyone who played the Doctor would miss that moment for the rest of their lives, because it doesn't get better than that. In many ways, guys, we'd agree with him. Still, where the Doctor was more calculated chaos, Smith's role beside Rhaenyra showed us what it's like when royalty lives on the edge of its sword and then gets dubbed Internet's new boyfriend for doing so. Look, as much as we get it, let's try and agree that it's more so Smith's royal charm that we'd like and not the dramatic killer. Let's talk about Smith's genius for House of the Dragon. It goes without saying, but still, spoiler warning. Okay, now look, we know, nobody's over the finale, and we deserve season two now. But other than those facts, what's also been revealed is that Smith isn't just incredible in playing royalty. No one's surprised. But he also gave some pretty good advice that left the internet with chills after the season finale. According to co-star Emma Darcy, the credit for the final shot in the episode goes to Smith. And honestly, hats off to that. If you need a reminder, in the final scene, Damon Targaryen reveals to his niece and wife 
wife Renera, played by Darcy, that her son Lucerus died while trying to send a message to one of her allies. Though we don't hear Damon say anything in the scene, we do see Renera's reaction, and the queen takes a moment to collect herself before looking at the camera directly with an angry expression, hinting that she ain't got mercy for no one next season. Legit, we can't wait for that. Darcy went on to tell GQ that they were initially worried about the scene until Smith suggested the change. They said that Smith directed that Damon should deliver the news to Renera while they were walking away from the camera towards the fireplace, just building up that tension until the final moment when everything is left to boil over into the next season. We can still guess that Renera could burn it all down in her grief. Up next, what can we expect from season two? Short answer, more drama, that's for sure. But if Darcy's fight for their character and Smith's to spend more time together pays off, then the next season could definitely have some explosive moments. And if you want some more exciting news to look forward to, Ryan Condal, showrunner of House of the Dragon, confirmed a deadline that there will be no more huge time jumps in the second season. So it should be just focused on heart-pumping drama and surprisingly emotional moments. Which as much as we want that, that also means being on the edge of our seats for each week's drop. Condal also added that, from now on, we'll be telling the story in real time. The actors will continue to play these characters until the end. Until we're ready for the story to match up with the even more exciting plot of Game of Thrones. Honestly, this universe just makes us question. What would it be like living in Westeros, but as a normal person? Have you guys ever thought of that? The people just wake up each day like, is a dragon about to blow my roof off, or can I get something to eat? Either way, we know that nobody is being recast, and that they'll now be in full swing to match the plot with the Dance of the Dragons. But, as much as we want it, Season 2 will only begin filming in 2023. This means we'll be waiting till 2024 for a release date. Finally, a fitting dragon to bow for his queen. If nothing else had satisfied you with Smith's performance as Damon, the scene of him singing in front of the third largest dragon in Westeros had to have done the job. But then, the question remains, what was the importance of Damon Targaryen's song to Vermithor? Well, there's no limit to what the answer could be, because there's no official info available about Vermithor's life before 48 AC when he accepted a young Jaehaerys as his rider. So, in true House of Dragon fashion, if Damon looked for this beast for his queen then, there's some lore that Season 2 could dive into. Like, the wand choosing the wizard guys, the dragon would have had to accept its rider, and Damon knew Rhaenyra could work with the fire breather. But also, we do know that Damon and Viserys, his grandchildren, have spent some time with Jaehaerys, so he may have picked up on some of his habits. It's possible that what Damon does in the season finale is something he saw Jaehaerys do when he was younger. He tries to calm it down. But for now, this is just a theory we have. To see what plot lines they go down, we're going to have to wait for season 2. That's a wrap on this video. Let us know what y'all think of Matt Smith's list of kings so far. Do you have a favorite? And what about his suggestion for the end scene of House of Dragons Season 1? What could it mean for the upcoming story? Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.